Hi folks, uh, a very interesting and very often asked interview question that I've seen being asked at multiple places. Uh, again, for a spectrum of data science and machine learning roles is this question. Let's assume you've built a machine learning model. The model could be anything from the simplest to the most complex. You might be building a state-of-the-art deep learning model or you might be building a very simple logistic regression model or a or a, or a naive base model or a k-nearest neighbor model. Let's assume we are building a model, just for simplicity, let's assume we are building a model for classification. Now, how do you determine that this model is overfitting or underfitting? Okay. It's a very, very, because one of the biggest challenges in machine learning is to ensure that your model doesn't overfit and we are not also underfitting. This is a very, very important task. This is a very real world question. Because if you overfit the model, obviously, your model will not work on future data that your model will come across. If you're underfitting, you're leaving a lot on the table. There is still much more performance that can be obtained that you're just leaving on the table without, without building a more complex model, right? The simplest technique, the simplest way to measure this is, imagine you have a model that is trained on training data Let's assume you also have cross-validation data and test data, right? Let's keep the test data out of the equation because we don't want to use it uh, right now. Imagine if your model, whatever your performance metric is, pick any performance metric of your choice. It could be log loss, it could be AUC, it could be F1 score, you name it, whatever it is, right? So I'll just call performance measure as, the, as a general term here, right? Now for any performance measure, if your model is performing very well on trained data. Let's assume your performance metric is AUC, uh, is let's say AUC, okay, or accuracy or any of these, right? If your model is performing very, very well on the training data, but not so well on the cross-validation data. Let's assume, let's assume you have accuracy as the metric, just make it simple, but this will work for any performance metric. Let's assume on your training data, your AUC is 0.9. But on cross-validation data, your AUC is only 0.65, which means your model is performing very, very well on the training data, but not so well on cross-validation data. This gap in performance, there is a significant gap, right? There is a significant gap in performance between your trained data, which has an AUC of 0.9, versus your cross-validation data, where you have an AUC of 0.65. We know that AUC lies between 0 to 1, a random model, has an AUC of 0.5 and the best model has an AUC of 1, right? Now, given these facts, you know that your model is training very well, sorry, your, your model is performing very well on trained data, but not so well on your cross-validation data. That shows that you have overfit your model to training data, okay? So the second case is, let's say you, both on training data and cross-validation data, you don't get very good performance. For example, Let's assume you only got a performance of 0.6 AUC on trained data. Similarly, even on your cross-validation data, let's assume you got a performance of 0.58. Here, the difference in performance between trained and cross-validated data is not very large. You have 0.6 AUC on trained data, you have 0.58 on cross-validated data. But in both instances, the performance is very low. That is a signal, see, that can, that can, that can, that that's a signal for two things. Number one is that your model is either underfit because your model is not performing even well on the trained data, which means you could have underfit the model. That's one possibility. Second possibility is that given your feature set, given the amount of data that you have, this is probably the best model that you can fit. Okay, there are two, there are two possibilities there. Okay, so as soon as you, I mean, this, the simplest way to debug Underfitting versus overfitting is if your model performs very poorly on cross-validated data, but very well on trained data. That's a straightforward signal that you're mostly overfitting your model. Second is if your model performs badly both on trained data and cross-validated data, that could be because of uh, underfitting or it could be because the feature set that you have and the data set you have is not sufficient to obtain a model with better performance. So you'll have to experiment and do some feature engineering and 
try out more complex models to see if you can push the performance of the model up or not, right? Again, don't expect your cross-validated data performance metric to be exactly same as train data. There will be some difference, okay? But the difference should not be drastic. So in a nutshell, if your train data performance is brilliant, your cross-validated data performance is not very good, you're surely overfitting. If both performances are bad, there is a chance that you're either underfitting or you need to work on your feature engineering and uh, data set size and things like that, right? So in such a case, if, you, if you're doubtful that you might be underfitting, just try to build a more complex model. Imagine if you're building a simple naive base model or a logistic regression model, try to apply more complex models like decision trees, random forests, gradient boosted decision trees, or deep learning models to, 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 to build a more complex model. Okay, and if the performance of the model improves both on trained data and cross validated data by using a more complex model, then certainly you know that you have been underfitting when you use the previous model. I hope, uh, and this is, this is a very common, this is something that we all come across in the real world. And this is a very, very important interview question that is often used across the spectrum of jobs, especially around data science and machine learning. 